Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A plus certification training course on installing and configuring security systems. I'm your host, James Messer, and in this module, we're going to discuss the requirements from our CompTIA exam 220 601, section 6.2, and 220 602, section 6.2, where we are installing, configuring, upgrading, optimizing security, not only the hardware and the software, but also some of the data security functions associated with those. In this module, we're going to talk about BIOS and what security options are available in your basic input-output system. We'll discuss smart cards and authentication technologies for your workstation, and then how your workstation can protect itself from malicious software. We'll then discuss event logging, how your wireless configurations are important. We'll talk about unused network connections and the type of security concerns we have there. And finally, file system conversions and why you may want to consider converting your file system in order to provide additional security. You may not realize it, but your workstation itself, the hardware, has some security features built into that in the BIOS. Your basic input-output system, when you start your computer, usually has passwords you can assign to it. You can set it up so that there are supervisor passwords that can only go in and configure your system BIOS if you know the password. There are user passwords that might give you access into the BIOS but not allow you to change anything. And there's also some boot passwords you can set so that when your system starts up before it will even go to the hard drives and do anything, you have to input a password. That means that nobody can do anything on your computer, even boot it from a CD-ROM, unless they know your password. You can also configure inside your BIOS access to boot devices. Well, one concern that many people have is people being able to boot things from a CD-ROM or a DVD-ROM. So you can disable the capabilities there or enable the capabilities from your hard drives, from your floppy drives, the USB ports, your CD-ROMs, your DVD. You have complete control over whether something can boot from that and when it's able to boot from that. You can also enable and disable ports. Having those USB keys can sometimes be a challenge because they are a security concern. You want to be sure that you don't have the have someone come in, put a USB key in, copy information, and take that out of the organization. Then you can disable the USB ports. You can also enable or disable access to things like floppy disks, so they can't copy things that way either. And of course, you have the ability to reset the BIOS. If you do set up information that is in here, a supervisor password, and you just don't remember the password, you need to look at the manufacturer's guide to see, how do I reset this BIOS? And how do I get it back to where it originally started so that I can then get access into this system? So if you're setting up passwords and you're doing these changes, make sure you know how to back out of this if there are any problems with it. Here's a BIOS setup command utility. This is a very common one. You can see there's a number of options across the top. And if I right arrow to the one that says security, I can see where some of those password settings are. I can change my supervisor password, my user password, or clear some of the passwords in my system. Here, I've also got one selection over the option for boot priorities. I can say which devices I can boot from. Notice that my USB drive isn't even listed in here. I can hit Enter, and I can choose some other devices to boot from. I can also choose what devices I want to boot from when. So I can move up or down the requirements for these boot devices. If I want to be sure that nobody can boot from my CD-ROM, I can simply arrow down and disable the access to that CD-ROM, and it disappears from my list. We've also got the ability under our advanced settings to go in to change some of the configurations. If you'd like to change what devices are available, perhaps you'd like to get rid of the floppy drive capabilities, you can administratively turn these off in the BIOS. And now nobody's able to copy any information from their system onto a floppy drive. Because according to your system, even if there's a physical floppy disk in your system, because you have disabled it in the BIOS, there's no possible way for your operating system to even know it's there to be able to copy information to it. Another method of providing security at the workstation is something called smart cards and additional authentication technologies. One of the things we're seeing today are things like smart cards. These are also being combined into the ID cards you might have. So it not only is an ID card that people can see to know who you are, but it also provides you access into your systems. And your keyboard or your system might have a little slot in it where you can slide the card in. And only once you put your card into your system do you then have access into your workstation. So it's another example of a multi-factor authentication where you have to have a physical piece of something to be able to add it into this to prove that you are you. 
There's also token generators. You can see an example of one here that's from Blizzard that they use for their World of Warcraft MMO game. The, the idea is that people can't get access into the system unless they hit a button on this token generator and type in that number that happens. And that number changes about every 30 seconds. So even if somebody on the other side of the globe wanted to log into your account, they might know your username. They might know your password. They might have put a key logger on your machine without you knowing it and gotten that information. But one thing they don't have is that token generator. And without that token generator, they don't get access into your system. If you ever lose that token generator, you have to call Blizzard, prove that you are you. They're going to send you a new one. And then you can get back into your account again. So these token generators are also very important to have. Just make sure you don't lose them. And finally, biometrics. What could be more personal than that? Something you own? Your fingerprints. And so things like fingerprint readers are becoming very common. You can use your fingerprint reader to confirm your username and password and that logs you into your system. Protecting our workstations from malicious software is also a growing security concern. And you've probably seen on most, most workstations, you have an antivirus client. There's our tens of thousands of viruses being created every week. And those viruses are now coming down into our workstations to try to get control of those devices. Spyware is a very similar challenge in that it, it wants to take control of our workstation, but it's going throughout other ways to do that. This is perhaps the biggest challenge for our enterprise users today because they have such a large number of systems. And it's so easy to get spyware on a system just by going to a website and having that website take advantage of a vulnerability in a media player or a flash player and now your systems are infected. So not only is it important to have anti-spyware, it's also important to keep your system patched to the latest version of all of your software. A personal or a software-based firewall on your workstations is also really important. And you're noticing that this is coming standard in your Windows operating systems these days. Incredibly important, especially if you're on a laptop and you travel from place to place and you're on unsecure wireless networks, you want to be sure you've got this firewall turned on. If that firewall isn't turned on, your system is wide open for attack. And it becomes very easy for someone to find any one of a, a lot of different ways to get into your system if that firewall is not turned on. So make sure that firewall is not only on your system, but it's active all the time. Have your automatic update turned on. You always want to be updated with the latest patches for your operating systems and your applications. There's no reason not to update. Uh, the updates themselves are checked and double checked to make sure they're going to solve these problems. And the security concerns you have far outweigh any problems you could ever possibly have with an update process. Make sure you have backups, certainly. But always make sure that you're getting the latest patches and latest updates for your antivirus software, your anti-spyware software, and all the signature updates that come with those. To see some of these updates and to look at some of these security pieces, you can always go to your security center in Windows XP and see how things are configured when the last updates came through and what you can do to keep your system up to date. If you work at an organization of any size, you'll notice that event logs become very important for the security person. This gives them a way to go back in time to see what's happened on a system. And these event logs are kept on everybody's workstations, on all of your routers, on all of your switches, on all of your wireless access points. There are a lot of logs you can go back and look at. They're so important that collecting them into a centralized management tool becomes very important. And you'll see this term, an SEIM policy, a security event information manager system, and a set of policies that collects all of these logs and puts them in a central place. The Windows Event Viewer is the central place on your Windows operating system to look at event logs. And in your control panel under Administrative Tools, there is an Event Viewer that then gives you a list of your application event logs, your security event logs, and allows you to go back in time to see what has happened from a security perspective on this Windows machine, what's happened from an application perspective. So not only is this really useful to be able to troubleshoot application problems, this can be useful for troubleshooting security issues as well. In our module on wireless security, we talked about some of the security concerns for wireless. But it's good to bring up that encryption is really the best way to secure your wireless networks. This protects anybody who might be spying in on you from seeing any of the data going through or making sense of any of the data that they can see. The security information is configured at the access point, And there is a lot of security pieces that have to be configured on the client workstation as well. Just make sure that you've got that encryption turned on and that you're able to communicate on the wireless network that way. If you ever need to confirm that the security is that set up that way, go back to your client config. Make sure that you're running via WPA or WPA2. 
probably not a good idea to run as WEP. Although that does encrypt data, we've seen that there are very no, very well-known vulnerabilities to that. People can get into that data very, very easily. So make sure it's at least WPA and WPA2 type of encryption for your wireless networks. And then you can be assured that the data between you and that access point is secure. The security risk of unused network connections may be a bigger one than you might realize. The idea behind this is that in public places, a conference room, a waiting area, just somewhere out in the hallway, there may be a network jack. And that network communication may be active there. It may be easy for me to walk by or be in a conference room in a meeting and simply plug in my laptop to see if I can get on your corporate network. Not only does this mean that your company network might be susceptible to someone like me coming in and plugging in, but what if it's a benign type thing? What if I'm just plugging in and it's a legitimate use, except I happen to have a worm that's on my system, and now I've come from the outside plugged into your network, and now I'm infecting your internal network. You may have some of the best firewalls and some of the best antivirus at the edge, and now I've just walked into your facility and infected everybody from the inside. So you want to make sure these network connections are managed and controlled, that nobody can simply get onto the network by plugging in. But it doesn't have to be a wired connection. It could also be wireless connectivity. So you do want to run checks from time to time. Make sure your wireless connections are secure. There are some wireless access points that allow you to set up security, but also have an unsecure configuration as well for other people to connect. That may be what you want to do, or it may be that you don't want to have that connection in there. So you may want to check in on that and make sure that nobody's using that unsecure connection, or even if one is configured, that it is disabled. It's very easy to eavesdrop on wireless networks, and you want to be sure that your network is secure between your client and your access point. If you're not running NTFS on your Windows system, then you should probably think about migrating over to an NTFS partition. NTFS provides with extensive security in enhancements. There are, especially if you're going from FAT or FAT32 to NTFS, you're going to find a lot of additional capabilities here. Things like more granular permissions for your directories and files, especially if multiple people are accessing your machine and you're providing access to those resources. This may be a big help to you because you can add some additional tightening down of the security and restrict things that people don't necessarily need to have access to. This also allows you to integrate this piece into Active Directory. This doesn't apply for everybody, but for larger organizations that are running an Active Directory, this is a centralized directory of authentication and resource information. This allows your hard drive to integrate seamlessly into that so that anybody who's set up with a username and password, you can assign very granular rights into your machine through that automated authentication process. NTFS also has built into it automatic encryption capabilities of directories and of files. You don't need any third-party tools or anything additional. You just turn on encryption and assign the proper passwords and configurations for that. And now you're encrypting this data that's on your hard drive. If somebody else logs onto your machine, even if they're the administrator on that machine, they can see the files are there, but they can't understand a thing about them. They don't, they can't, they don't have access and can't see anything that's in there because you're the only one who has rights and permissions to decrypt that information. So because that's also integrated into the operating system, there's no going back. So it's a double-edged sword. You can encrypt this data but make sure that you remember what those passwords were or you may never be able to get to that data again. We've looked at a lot of different security systems, not only in our BIOS, but also through our smart cards or different authentication technologies. We've discussed protecting yourself from malicious software, uh, event logging and the importance of that, not only at a local workstation, but in the enterprise. We've also looked at wireless configurations, unused network connections, and finally, the importance of needing to migrate to NTFS as a very secure file system on your workstation. For more free a videos, to participate in our message boards, and much more, you can visit our website, freeaplus.com.